Newcastle goes and Norway go through. Oh, dear me. Wonder how they're reacting to this in Norway. Bloody, bloody, bloody Norway. <laughs> Nelson Piquet. <laughs> Welcome to Fantasy World Cup Live. Later on, we'll be recreating a famous Scottish World Cup moment. And we'll be saying a big hello to Aaron Shearer. Hello, I'm Aaron Shearer. <laughs> and tiresomely, he really is called Aaron Shearer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the AOL card. Yeah. Whatever that is. Whatever that is. We don't know what that but is. But anyway, here's a few things we've noticed from watching the World Cup over the last couple of days. Now, I think Scotland could have beaten Morocco if only they'd kept their heads on the bench. <laughs> and maybe one of the reasons why Spain have gone out of the World Cup is their tendency to reveal their formation before the kickoff. <laughs> and Casey Keller, the American keeper, is a really good player, but he does sometimes dive a little bit late. And this striker has clearly not been watching the World Cup over the last couple of days. If he had, he'd know the trick is to do it before the penalty, not after. <laughs> Stupid. Stato, you didn't have to bleach you. No, that was a result, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In case anyone tuning in doesn't know, Stato was going to bleach his hair if Scotland went into the next round. Yes. Yes. Yeah, no, never really much danger then, was there? No. <laughs> oh, dear, you were a Scotland awful. fan as well. I am, but it was a desperate performance. I mean, I think even the most ardent Scottish fan would be woke up very depressed. The only yes. thing was, the only <laughs> oh thing I got... Yeah, with well, a hangover like that... Had they, had, had, they, had they won, it would have been the typical way for Scotland to have gone out with Norway having won with that late winner against Brazil. Yes, yes, yes. thank you very much, Tony. This, this, this isn't a proper sports show, <laughs> you know that. <laughs> By the way, we, you've got, um, as we all know, this big bet on we read cards in the World Cup. How's that going? Yeah, 15 so far. It's looking OK. Need four more and then I'll make a few quid, I think. Hmm. It's good you're thinking about the good of the game. So. <laughs> <laughs> I do actually think about the good of the game. Do you? I like the game, yeah. You good. like the game? Well, that is a good thing, considering yeah. your job. <laughs> or whatever. OK, now, um, Stato, as you may know, is also a uh, commentator on Eurosport. Mm. Yeah. Are you not? And we think you might have another bet on. In fact, we think you could have a bet on with Glenn Hoddle at the moment. If it became one situation, then we really would have a, a fascinating situation, because uh, we'd actually have a lot situation. <laughs> uh, it's nil-nil, and we'll have to... Assess that situation in the latter stage of the second. <laughs> was that deliberate or what? Did you go a bit mental? What <laughs> no, it was one of those situations. Yeah, the goblins <laughs> could be there, <laughs> <laughs> said the And uh, once again, it's time for a look at Yorkshire TV's marvellous indoor league. <laughs> okay. As you know, indoor league was introduced by Fred Truman, who always started the show by saying. Now then. Now then. Now then. <laughs> he always went into the break by saying, I'll sit there. <laughs> I'll sit there. <laughs> and he always came back from the break by saying, Hey up. <laughs> and, 
Daniel. And then always ended by saying... I'll sit there. <laughs> Again, because they couldn't think of a fourth one. They did, they did try a few other ways of saying goodbye, but it didn't really work. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> That'll be ITV saying, here's your cards, lads. <laughs> it's Carol Vorderman. Yeah. Yeah. Tea, tea, Carol. Yes, well, we thought we had quite a few people on who were very badly behaved. We thought we'd be in team biscuits. We're being polite. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's, that's lovely of you. That's very yeah. nice, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, if John Lydon had brought tea, just to throw it in our faces. <laughs> I don't tea in itself is great. But that's. Uh, by the way, Justin, I've got to say straight away that um, Scotland didn't really obey what you told them in your song. <laughs> you <know>, they, <laughs> they have come home too soon. And mm, what do you I'm, feel about that? I'm completely personally blameless. Um, I was there, as you know. Um, yeah. It was, uh, it was just appalling, really. Mm. There were tears. Actually, we all, everybody I was with started crying, and growing men were crying. Were you singing the song at the time? Or? <laughs> 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 we were thinking of your song. Oh, right. <laughs> um, That's uh, the thing about songs. It's good, because you put Don't Come Home Too Soon, and they did come home too soon, and we, of course, put Gaza good as before yeah. in our song. <laughs> so they won't listen, these footballers. Well, well Gaza has almost been as good as before. Yes. Um, by virtue of not being. It was very sad, though, to see the Moroccans, wasn't it? You know, they were there, fire, fantastic. And then, obviously, when they heard... Yeah. No, I thought that was really funny. <laughs> 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 it's it's not cruel. often you see two teams really, really depressed at the end. It was a double <laughs> well, whammy. Spain tonight as yeah, well. Yeah, Spain, six okay, goals. Who, here's a joke. Who was the most depressed man in the world after the Scotland-Morocco game? I don't know. Who was the most depressed <laughs> man in the world after the Scotland-Morocco game? Arab C. Nesbitt. Oh. Hey. Oh. Hey. Hold on, hold on. Hey. Oh. Oh. Not working, forget it. Okay. <laughs> Did you think the Moroccan coach looked like um, Melvin Bragg, Lord Bragg? He had a kind of swarthy Melvin Bragg look about it's him. Melvin Bragg, our Lord. Yeah, so. He's yeah. Lord now, did you miss that? Yeah, Lord, yeah. yeah. Totally missed oh, you that, missed yeah. that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you missed that, didn't you? Yeah. Good to go. armband, by the way, that's because of Scotland, isn't it? Yeah, I mean... It's not because you're about to take some heroin, right? I'm grieving. <laughs> <laughs> No, I've done the heroin. Oh, right. Um, yeah. so what you did know you... that indoor league that you've just been showing? Little yeah. known TV fact here, but the producer of Countdown, who was our producer for many years, was actually the man who brought indoor league to television. Oh, Lord. Is that right? Yeah. Lord, you must meet Stato with that kind of... Outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stato's the man for me, you know. Is he? Yeah. Match Is made it? in heaven, I would say. Oh, yeah. blimey. Don't you think, Stato? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Don't you think? <laughs> Yes, I can see him on Tomorrow's World. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow's World, if you're not careful. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you one thing about the Scotland game, which is, according to two of our viewers, Ed Barnes and Joel Cutting of Ipswich, Gordon Jury did actually get one shot on target in the Morocco game, if you assume that his target was this photographer behind the goal. Watch this. Jury. That's a good try. Oh! I could do it, Gordon. So, um, one thing I, I must ask, um, Jim Layton, why does he do all that stuff with the Vaseline? Well, my theory is that he's got very fine hair. And uh, this is my, I was asked this the other day, actually, and I came, immediately came up with this complete bullshit theory, <laughs> that um, uh, his hair is so fine that it doesn't um, sweat, just pours into his eyes, you see. It doesn't act as a conduit. What do you think? <laughs> I see. What think about that's a good baldies, theory? then? No, I don't well, I would imagine if you were... If you were a baldy, you'd have to put Vaseline on your oh, you eyebrows all the time. Because uh, I heard that it was very sunny in France, and he wouldn't splash out any money to replace the cap he used to wear at junior school when it was sunny. <laughs> so he used to just force that one. <laughs> Is that not true? That's, that's possible. He could have done with a bit underneath the eyes, I suppose, after the game. That's the tears. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Poor Jim. Reservoirs there, wouldn't he, with that? Oh. We've been doing some research, though, into the Moroccan team, haven't we? Yeah, I'll tell you, I don't, this is, now, I'm not making this up. The best Moroccan player of all time, right? And we've got a, we've got a team sheet here from England versus Morocco. And there, there he is, though. He was called Abdul Krim Meri Krimmer. <laughs> <laughs> How's 
absolutely true. His full name, apparently, was Abdul Krim, Merry Krimo, and a Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> Still true. His brother was in the same side, and his name was Mustafa Merry Krimo. <laughs> It's true. absolutely true. true. He was a bloke from the Beano. It's absolutely true. <laughs> I think they had a cousin called Simply Having a Wonderful Christmas Time. <laughs> and if you think that's the most ridiculous name you've ever seen on a national team sheet, if we look at that again, look, Mark Hately. Ciao. <laughs> That's even more ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> I'll tell you something, though. Is that when uh, Scotland got beaten by Peru in 1978, <coughs> right? I thought, I thought you right. said you were not going to mention the P word. Oh. <laughs> the P word? I thought that was a deal. <laughs> Now, I have to tell Sorry. you this, because uh, it's interesting, because when Scotland were beaten by Peru, apparently in Scotland, people were so desperate to take their aggression out on something that the llama in Glasgow Zoo, right, had to be put on 24-hour alert. <laughs> <laughs> Which is absolutely true. I think, that there you go. It's true. Uh, now, the llama uh, wasn't on 24-hour alert. No, no, he wasn't. It was a guard. <laughs> he was alert. It wasn't saying, we need to phone you, the llama, <laughs> at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> he was ready to spit. The llama had to wear a bozza. I was wondering what, what kind of Moroccan things might be in danger in Scotland at the moment, like curly slippers would be in danger. <laughs> <laughs> Rugs and things like that. A lot of arson attacks on fezzes. Yeah. All the time. Over BMWs when you lose against Germany, we turn yeah. on the llamas, why not? Yeah. Anything will do, really. <laughs> Anything to do. Yeah. Well, even this week, though, this, again, true, in uh, Glasgow City Zoo, they've, they've had some pot-bellied pigs have been born. And they said anyone who slags off Scotland, they're going to name one of the pigs after them. <laughs> That's true. And the Norway manager, um, Egil Olsen, that this pig here, we've got a pig. Uh, that pig, <laughs> true, he's called Egil Olsen because he slags that. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Egil Bacon, I'd call him. <laughs> <laughs> hey? No, no but it's <laughs> true. That is a true thing. Talking about Egil Bacon, uh, if you uh, saw the show the other, the other yeah. night, we did this thing, which uh, you'll be interested in as a sort of wordplay person, yeah. which is that we, we asked for name compounds to make up words made out of names of players from the World yeah. Cup. And we've had loads sent in. We had one from Mike Raven in Stockport, which was Masinger Song. <laughs> clever. <laughs> clever, Mike. Well done. Didn't get a lot, but clever. clever. Yeah, yeah. Didn't get a lot. And we had a very topical one. Uh, this one is uh, Lasso is a Nyanka. <laughs> From someone called Virgil. Yeah. From the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a made up name. Yeah, Thunderbird. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and this one, look at this one. This is from Andrew Barnes. Of now, Rugby, this is right? a this is very odd. Now, it this just, is a massive. It just looks like nonsense when you see it, but yeah. actually, it's a tale of an upset stomach, right? And you have to read it like this Oh no, had a tricky egg, an I poo a job, <laughs> Hofton. <laughs> Some people just have too much time on their hands. That's it, because he maybe took a couple of days off work. Yeah. He's the kind of guy that writes letters to his girlfriend, which are entirely composed of Christa Berg song titles. <laughs> well, he's one of those people. I had a mate who went out with a girl called Alison Pierce, right? I hope you're not watching Alison. But, and, and she was a lovely woman, but she had very uh, sticky out ears on the yeah, side. Alison Pierce and was, we was on, <laughs> Yeah, we was on holiday, and he wrote her a letter, and he wrote, Miss A. Pierce. And it suddenly occurred to him, he wrote in brackets after, Ape Ears. <laughs> <laughs> She dumped him. She dumped him. It's absolutely true. But by the way, the closing date for the word, uh, the word game is the final whistle of the england Colombia game on Friday. So yeah. any entries we get before that, we'll give a massive prize. Yeah. Anyway, what we thought we'd it's do like now... It's like bloody magpie. Oh, God, this is it's a <laughs> swap shop. OK, what we're going to do now yeah. is we're going to do... We're going to set you, you two, because you're right. obviously from Countdown. We're going to set yeah. the two of you a little... No, I, I don't do Countdown. Oh, I thought you don't. Oh, I, I thought you were Richard Whiteley. <laughs> no. OK, well, we're going to set you anyway oh, a little... Rich. Football conundrum, OK? This yeah. is... Uh, we're going to do the name of a football, a football personality. Mm -hmm. Famous football celebrity. Okay. Yeah, OK, let's go. OK, let's That's do it. For, let's do it. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, no way. <laughs> oh, M Moldovan. Have you got it? What do you yes. think? Moldovan. Yes. Moldovan. No, Moldovan. No, no, what's yours? Uh, I was thinking of Lavoy something. No. Right. After Harry, after Harry, let's go. go for it. Yeah! <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Well, that's true. I see. I was thinking. You know those um, compound names that you've got. We were playing around with compound names, weren't we? Early, and we came up with one uh, based on David Muller, which was uh, We're David's Muller. Hajabolikov. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, he tried to, didn't he? Did he? Didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We thought it was funny at the time. Yeah. <laughs> <I'd>... <laughs> 
Anyway, uh, <laughs> do, do you watch much football, Carol? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Who's... I like things like Euro 96 World Cup and so on, yeah. Yeah. But I don't go to matches, I have to say. I used to, but not anymore. You just go and see Leeds United play. I don't know if you've noticed this. Oh, come on. Yeah. I've always felt that football violence started at Leeds United. Yeah, I, I was there when actually... the terraces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's that indoor league again, isn't it? Mm. Oh, well, have you that. noticed that um, on the World Cup, that, that the French director who's ever, like, directing the camera, they always seek out the nice-looking women in the crowd. That, quite right, too. It did, just quite keep right doing too. it. Yeah. Have you, seen, have you noticed that, Justin? Well, it's there? quite arty as well. It's kind of quite Jean-Luc Godard or yeah. whatever. It's, it's kind of weird. Yeah, but if there's a decent bird there, they're in. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's, there were, I mean, there were, there were two Jamaican fans who were constantly on the screen, even after, you know, after Jamaica had lost and gone out of the tournament. It's dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> well, we put together this little montage of women from the crowd, and exactly they would have done if this was a proper TV sports programme. Girls, girls, girls. Girls, girls, girls. Girls, girls, girls. Girls, girls, girls. Well, yellow, red, black, or white. Don't add a little bit of moonlight for this intercontinental. Actually, sorry. Can we just see that last bit again? Can I ask you, right, to look at the bloke in the top left-hand corner? What's he saying? <laughs> He didn't. And he <laughs> I bet he didn't. No, no comment. No. <laughs> no, not at all. No, I don't think he did either. You're right, Frank. You're right. No, no, no. I'm, I've just had a vision. Suddenly, everything makes sense. Really? I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, it's like, uh... <laughs> nice. <laughs> Good look. Nice. Scary. I'll sit Thank you very much, Fred. When was that? When was that on? Not sure. When was, was it on? Seventies. Seventies. Yeah. 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 You so it was just oh, after the Sol. Did you have the Sullivans in Scotland? No, I don't think so. No, not even the Neil Sullivans. <laughs> Sorry, but the night is marvellous. It was set. It was set in Australia, right? And, but we're, we're, this is no, shown in Australia, by the way. It is shown in Australia. Australia. Hello, Australia. Australia. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, you bloody you. <laughs> oh, you bloody you. That's my Terry Venables impression. <laughs> it was on. It, I used to watch it when I was like wagging off school. It was, it was brilliant. You were what off school? Wagging. <laughs> I used to do a bit of that. Um, now, <laughs> if you saw the last show, you'll know that we offered um, Pedro Monzon's <laughs> pants. There they are. That's He's a bad pants pant. The first man to be sent off in a World Cup. That is one. a really bad pant. Yeah. It's a really bad pant. We have a rule in our band: anybody with a bad pant. Oh, off the tour. But he's really? Argentinian, you know, yeah. times are hard out there. What do you wear? Yeah. I, the I thing is, if he talks his jonter into them. <laughs> anyway, um, anyway, what you should know is that we've had a few bids for these. Some people, even though it is a bad pant, you're quite right, Justin, yeah. people have been bidding for them all over the country. And uh, the, the highest bid we've had is from Mr Jamie Lear of Bethnal Green, which is 500 quid. Wow. 500, 500 quid? Yeah, 500 quid. But for bad pants? Mm? For bad pants in a frame, can you believe it? But <laughs> nonetheless, don't forget, the money will be going to uh, oh. Bernardo's, and the orphans are still there waiting for more. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There they are. You should feel guilty. Right? Heartless <laughs> German. Yeah. Do, do you want to put in a, a bid at all for anything? For the pants? For the pants? In the frame? Yeah. Not interesting? I'll tell you what, I'll give you a tenner for a pair of yours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Sorry. Are you going to wag it to them? <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh. Gone too far. I do apologise. Yeah. Do you? Do you? <laughs> yes, uh, let's move on. How do you <laughs> wag off an entire school? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> joke about being able to smell the conundrum. Dirt! <laughs> now listen. Now listen. Yes. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you. Keep up or go home. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? What, what is it? What? What? We didn't notice. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what gets on my wit. I've I'll tell just you seen Emma Noble in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's changed, hasn't she? <laughs> I tell you what, I don't like. I don't, on ITV, like yeah. in between the coverage before the adverts, they have yeah. these little adverts oh, the for Vauxhall, I think, and they are terrible, aren't they? 
They really annoy me. But we've got a new game that me and Frank are playing, right? What we, we do, when we watch a game, we yeah. try and pick the moment that will end up as a Vauxhall advert. Yeah, and there was, <laughs> a moment, yeah, yeah. there was a moment in last night's game which I'm sure eventually will be a terrible Vauxhall ad. OK, OK. Yes, now the windscreen wipers go like this. They're very efficient. <laughs> yes, a lot of room in the front of the car. Oh, yes, yes, it's a mentally spacious car. And the wheels go round and round like this. <laughs> OK, I'll buy that Vauxhall Astra. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Why, I mean, why are they so unfunny? There's got to be a reason why they're so unfunny. Oh, yeah, I think it's advertising people, isn't it? That's just it. <laughs> kind of offended lots of people now. Yeah, oh, them. I think they're great <laughs> if you want to send us a car. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we, we had a fact. I've got an air in my mouth. No, have you? I ate the. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> what, no, I was. No. Yeah. Yeah. no. I was gonna make a joke about yeah, no. about your pants, Carol, but I'm not going to... No. Uh, I was going to say, Klinsman's wife, 1996. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, we had this set of facts from Rob Hale from Swindon, who asked, where do you get all your ideas from for the show? Which is the question you get asked. Well, you probably get asked that about your songs, whatever. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I hope you never had any ideas, so... Yeah. <laughs> well, t we thought we'd try and explain, actually, which is what... We'll show you how, how a joke works on this show. Okay. We were watching Cameroon Chile the other day, yeah. and they had this shot of the Cameroon manager, Claude Leroy. Uh, Claude oh! Leroy. So I said, look at that shirt on Claude Leroy. Is that what they call a Claude Leroy shirt? Claude Leroy. Like Claude Leroy. You guys are paid for that. Yeah. <laughs> That's at home. By the way, do you want... We've got some Scottish short bread yeah. I think the sell-by date's gone, but... <laughs> so, no, carry on. That was just me getting my own back. It wasn't a serious... I'll start crying again. Don't cry. Instead of... Hang on. Instead of dismissing this as a, as a, a silly little pun, I started talking about what a Claude Leroy shirt would look like. In fact, what a Claude Leroy trouser would look like, a Claude Leroy shirt. In fact, what a whole Claude Leroy suit would look like. And this is what we decided it would look like. Flash them lights, it'd have a fit. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked. It's all based on the fact that Frank, Frank has actually got a bit of a sort of disease, isn't it? Not the obvious one, but a disease when it comes to puns, haven't you? Yeah, I love you love puns I as well. Puns, yeah. I Impulsive really love puns. it. And I was watching the Italian team and I thought there's nearly a whole fools and horses pun going here. Because you could have um, Del Piero there's boy. There's nothing worse than a pun except a nearly a pun. <laughs> yeah, well, nearly. <laughs> Del I'm Piero boy, right? Yeah. Uncle Albertini. <laughs> and I just needed a Roderick. So if, if anyone's watching, if they can help me with this, send in, fax me. <laughs> Robert's pun. That's what we're looking for. Uh, and now it's time for World Cup Phoenix from the Flames. Phoenix from the Flames. Phoenix from the Flames. Phoenix from the Flames. So, Willie. Call me Bud. Everybody calls me Bud. And here in Scotland, they call me Wee Bud. OK. We bad it is, then. So what we're doing, lads? My two goals for Rangers in the Cup Winners' Cup final or my ITV goal of the season against Blackpool? No, we're doing when you got sent back from Argentina in 1978 for failing a drugs test. We bod. <laughs> well, that's ridiculous. How could I possibly smuggle drugs through customs at Buenos Aires Airport? Everyone was incredibly strict about drugs at that World Cup, even after Montreux, the ITV interviewer, had to leave behind his special anti flatulent pills. Now, your last match is uh, <coughs> against Holland. Uh, <laughs> in 1974. ITV were pretty sympathetic towards Scotland, though. Yeah. After we lost to Peru, they put together a little mournful video piece about our manager, Ali McLeod, backed by an Elton John song. In 90 minutes of that game last night, what do I say when it's all over? The sorry seems to be the hardest word. <laughs> it's so sad. It's so sad. Still, Ali was pretty hard on us as well. They were under fire from Ali McLeod, who complained that the traditional Scottish verve was missing in their play. What did he mean, the traditional Scottish verve? 
Haven't you heard of them? They provided the song for the video piece about my performance that night. Now the trucks don't go. They just make you worse, but I know I'll see your face again. So then what happened? Well, me and Kenny Dalgleish were picked out and had to go and give a urine sample. So they chose us to take the test. Do you think that makes us suspect? Oh, no, I'm sure they just chose people absolutely at random. Anyway, um, bad luck, Justin. I know people in Scotland will be back in England all the way there in the World Cup. <laughs> so, uh, thanks for coming tonight. Thanks a lot, Carol. Pleasure. You're brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Friday's guests, who we booked three weeks ago, are Colin Hendry and Craig Brown. <laughs> <laughs> it was a joke. <laughs> well, who's this going to be? Do you think? I don't know. <laughs> all right, Jeff. Have you, uh, have, you, uh, have you come as Abdul Krim Merry Krimmer? I sure have. So, are you going to uh, sing a song to bring the England lads good luck on Friday night? I sure am. <laughs> Jeff Astle, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> See that cinnamon stick, cinnamon stick, cinnamon stick. See that twinkle in her eyes, cinnamon stick, cinnamon stick. Sweet as sugar, nice as pie, cinnamon stick, cinnamon stick. See that twinkle in her eyes, cinnamon stick, cinnamon stick. Well, I've never seen a sweeter and a life go by. She holds me tight. It's out of sight. Then I tell her that I'll beg her till the day.